morning, I am Renu Sharma, Assistant Professor EC Department. Today, I am going to discuss the next topic of uh, CDMA. Uh, after uh, in the previous lecture, we have discussed about introduction of CDMA. Now, we will going to discuss the two channels that is forward channel of CDMA and reverse channel of CDMA. So, we will discuss its block diagram. So, CDMA is a technique um, that comes under this IS 95, there are two types, uh, uh, it is a kind of wideband system that is CDMA 2000 and it supports larger number of users as compared to GSM. So, this is first one, first topic that is forward link or the forward channel. So, these are some of the points that is related to this particular uh, thing that is forward channel that it supports 869 to means the range of frequencies uh, which is allot, uh, allotted for this forward channel is range from this 869 megahertz to uh, 894 megahertz. Each channel is 1.25 megahertz wide. It is subdivided into four sub channels. So, these are the four sub channels are there means each channel is having some information. These four informations are required first one is the pilot which is uh, which is used for timing purpose phase reference for coherent demodulation now what is this coherent demodulation there are two types of modulation or demodulation coherent and incoherent in case of this coherent when we are talking about analog communication in case of this analog communication when the message signal is analog in nature we require a carrier signal for modulation and demodulation both. Then this is continuous in nature, this is continuous in nature. Whatever signal is generated, it is known as modulated signal before uh, it is transferred over a channel, it is received. Then it is again, uh, this is product modulator basically, then we receive the message signal whatever we have transmitted we will receive it again. So, in case of this analog communication carrier signal wh whatever carrier signal we are using it it should be same both at the transmitter side and the receiver side then only the proper demodulation will take place otherwise there uh, there will be some noise or uh, the demodulation and modulation will not work properly. So, that is coherent modulation. When we are talking about digital communication, let us say we, we want to transmit this information then modular 2 addition is performed with the PN sequence. This is channel and this is again the message that is 1 1. So, whatever PN sequence which is uh, digital in nature in terms of bits it can be 10 bits, 12 bits, 20 bits, 32 bits maximum size is 32 bits. Uh, whatever PN sequence that we are using over here it should be used uh, same at the receiver side also. So, that is uh, known as coherent detection. So, means phase reference for coherent demodulation is there. So, that is known as pilot, pilot carrier. It means for signal strength comparison. Second uh, sub channel is the synchronization that is sync. It broadcast the future state of uh, the log code register. Then paging is required that is used for the call control information. Then traffic is there that is used to transfer this voice data. It includes the power control sub channel. Now, this is the block diagram of the forward channel in IS 95. Now, I am going to explain it one by one like this is the first block that is known as audio compressor. Now, you can see over here that there are four different data rates which are provided. So, the output over here can be one of the data rate like it can be 96 9600 bits per second, 4800 bits per second, it can be 2400 or it can be 1200 bits per second. So, these are the four different data rates that are available. So, the output over here it can be from one, any one of the data rate is there. Now, it will be provided to this convolution encoder, its rate is 1 by 2 and its length will be 9. So, 9 which means that it will be 9 bits of original data is there. So, convolution encoder comes into here. This is the rate after this. 
that is 19.2 kbps. Then after this there is a block interleaver. Now, these blocks are explained in detail in coming slides also. So, block interleaver it is a kind of array which is of 24 cross 16 means 24 rows and 16 columns are there. So, it generates 384 bits then data scrambling will be performed this is nothing this is the modulo 2 addition of this data and the data which is being generated from uh, over here like this is the long code generator this is nothing this is the pn sequence generator which will going to generate at this rate this is the decimator so there are two types of um, systems are there first one is interpolator uh, other one is decimator interpolator means adding uh, additional bits in between the available bits but in case of decimator it will going to remove the equal number of bits in between the available bit. So, this is the output now this is uh, being scrambled uh, over here. It is applied to this mux and to this mux we require a power control bit then there will be a Walsh code generator. So, it will be divided into two channels first one is the in phase channel other one is the Q, cha Q channel. So, in phase channel and Q channel what is the difference between these two channels in case of in phase channel whatever carrier signal is generated it will be modulo uh, modulated as uh, as it is, but in case of Q phase uh, Q channel it will be shifted by some amount and uh, by some phase in case of analog communication or in, uh, in uh, bits in case of this um, Q channel then at the output it will be applied to this data to I channel of QPSK RF modulator and this is applied to data to Q channel of QPSK RF modulator. So, this is forward channel block diagram. So, we will discuss some of the important blocks of this particular block diagram in detail. So, first one is the convolution encoder and repetition. It adds redundancy to the data transmissions for error robustness. Uh, its rate is half where r is the is calculated as its input bits divided by output bits. So, whatever input bits we are having divided by the number of output bits, it maintains an output data rate of 19.2 kbps regardless of the input rate. So, whatever number of inputs it is going to generate, the data rate of this particular block that is convolution encoder is fixed. It is 19.2 kbps regardless of uh, uh, whether the input bit is of 2 bits, whether input bits of uh, 20 bits or whatever uh, the output data rate is fixed. So, this is the incoming data possible rates are 9600 bits per second 4800 2400 or it will be 1200. So, it will be uh, uh, will, uh, it will be provided to this register that has values d naught to d 8 means 9 bits are available. Now, this is applied to this XOR operation where g naught and g 1 are there. So, note while this is easy to implement at the transmitter, it is not trivial uh, to undo at the receiver side. So, this is the convolution encoder. Next one is the block interleaver. So, it separates when consecutive data bits are sent therefore, adding to the transmission robustness. It provides time diversity two pages one is being filled as one is emptied. So, this is the concept behind like this is the number of rows, these are the number of columns which are uh, this is number of columns are there, these are the number of rows. So, in this particular block data will be inserted. So, each page uh, contains all the data for 120 millisecond of frame. So, it is 24 into 16 bits which means it is 384 bits that it is generating. Data rate can be calculated uh, this number of bits can also be can, um, calculated by using this 19.2 kbps which is the output of this convolution encoder which is fixed. Then it is multiplied by the time required that is 20 millisecond per frame is required. Then it will again generate 384 bits. So, this is both uh, verified. So, data is read as uh, in as rows and out as columns. So, it is read like this and it is output from this particular column. 
So, this is the work of this block interleaver. So, next is the long p n sequence, long p n sequence means uh, p n code generator that is a pseudo noise sequence. So, this sequence will uh, be used to scramble the data to code when uh, to send power control bit 42 uh, bit maximum length of shift register is there corresponds to 2 to the power 42 minus 1 possible permutations are required. Contents of the shift register are exhorted with a public or a private key depending on the stage of the call to generate one output at a rate of 1.2288 mcps. It takes a very long time to repeat which means uh, repetition means since we are using the pn sequences it is of larger number of bits. So, let us say I want to generate 100 pn sequences of 32 bits. So, after this 100 uh, pn sequence let us say again the cycle will repeat then the first uh, bit will be generated. So, the, the in this manner it will take a very long time to repeat the scrambler it used uh, it is used for the data encryption it may call more secure it randomizes the data prevents the transition of a long series of 1s or 0. So, this is the work of this scrambler. Now, next one is the power control bit. So, it is dynamic decentralized closed loop power control scheme. It uh, control scheme is BS, uh, the base station will decide what to do based on the measured frame error rate. So, this is FER is nothing, this is the frame error rate. Like two types of error rates are there it may be more like bit error rate. Let us say I have transmitted 10 bits, I have transmitted 10 bits then uh, out of which 2 bits are under uh, 2 bits are uh, comes under this error. So, this will be the uh, bit error rate from uh, where you can calculate the bit error rate number of bits uh, which are change divided by total bits. Let us say we have 10 bits and out of which 2 bits are having error. So, 2 by 10 this will be the bit error rate. So, same way in the same manner we can also calculate the frame error rate. Let us say I have transmitted 10 frames and uh, how many frames are having error. So, let us say this frame error rate is less than threshold then it decreases the mobile power by 1 decibel and if frame error rate is greater than threshold then it increases the mobile power by 1 decibel. So, 1 bit sent every 1.25 uh, millisecond which will be equals to 800 hertz or 16 power control bits per frame. So, the power control bit is sent in one of the 16 possible locations coded by 4 bit of uh, output of the second decimator. So, decimator work is to remove the intermediate bits between two considered bits. So, decimator or uh, second output is 4 bits in multiplied by 8000 then again it will be having 3.2 kbps of this. So, this was reduced by a factor of 6 from 19.2 kbps of the at the scrambler. Now, orthogonal covering via Walsh code. So, whatever uh, Walsh code uh, I have told you that it is a kind of table, it can be 2 cross 2 uh, matrix, it can be 4 cross 4 matrix depending on the number of bits that you want to modulate using this Walsh table. These codes are basically orthogonal is na in nature. So, 64 orthogonal channels for all users assuming negligible multipath delays, it provides some spreading. 64 cross 64 Walsh matrix is there, one row is equals to one Walsh code. Each row of the matrix is exported at 19.2 kilohertz, one row for each bit that is sent from the scrambler. 64 bits per row multiplied by 19.2 kilohertz uh, per row. So, channel 0th is assigned to the pilot and is given more power than the rest of the channel, which means let us say channel 0 is there, then channel 1 and it will be extended to channel 32. So, this will be 
allocated for the pilot carrier. Pilot carrier is used for timing purpose. It is used for providing the time reference uh, for providing the coherent demodulation. So, the first channel the cha channel 0 it is assigned for the pilot and channel two, 32 is assigned for the synchronization and the intermediate channels from 1 to 31 it will be allocated for the data transmission. So, this is how the orthogonality will be maintained using this Walsh code. Next one is quadrature modulation short code it provides more spreading as not all Walsh code have sufficient spreading. It is based on a 15 bit maximum uh, length shift register that is 2 to the power 15 minus 1 possible permutations. This is the pilot sequence if it is modulated by the Walsh code that is 0. PN generator output uh, the data at 1.2288 megabits per second the same rate as the Walsh code generator is there. Different uh, cells uses different time offsets of the uh, short code as to identify themselves so as Walsh codes can be reused. The PN sequence for the I channel is based on different polynomials than the Q channel and they uh, therefore evolve differently. differentially then the output i and q channels are converted to analog and are modulated by a rf carrier uh, which is used for this qpsk so this is the quadrature modulation so the basic idea behind this quadrature modulation that whatever message signal you are generating you are, you want to transmit it is divided into two channels first one is I channel another one is Q channel it is modulated by PN sequences this is uh, directly applied and this is shifted by some point and then it is applied. So, then it will be added and then this is how the quadrature modulation will be performed in I channel and Q channel point. Now, next is the reverse channel. So, till this point we have discussed about the forward channel then now this will be the reverse channel. Reverse channel is uh, having the bandwidth range from 824 megahertz to 849 megahertz that is each channel is 45 megahertz away from the forward counterpart. It access channel is uh, 4800 bits per second it initiate the communication it responds to uh, paging channel message reverse voice traffic is 9600 4800 2400 or 1200 bits per second. So, this is same whatever we have uh, seen in the uh, forward channel the output of this audio compressor it can be any one of this. So, in uh, the same way this reverse voice traffic can be any one of this one that is 9600. 4824 or 1200 uh, bits per second. It is very similar to forward link, but there are different uh, some important differences are also there. This IS95 reverse channel, this is the block diagram like this will be the audio compressor, its output data rate is 9600. 4800, 2400 and 1200 bits per second. Its convolution encoder is R is equals to 1 by 3, it can be K is equals to 9. So, the output will be uh, 28.8 uh, kbps. Block interleaver is 32 into 18 that is 576 bits. Walsh code generator, it is 64 array uh, orthogonal modulator that is code 6 bits. The output will be the data burst randomizer. So, this uh, long code P n generator is there the output will be 1.2288 MCPS this is the output of a P n sequence generator. The output of this will be applied to this data bus randomizer and this modulo 2 addition. Then this is applied to the two channels first one is the I channel other one is the Q channel. The I channel is nothing this is in phase channel and Q channel is nothing it is the quadrature phase channel. Here a decimeter is also uh, used over here which is denoted by this T. Now, this T will going to reduce or remove the intermediate bits in between this particular uh, bits that is generated. Now, at the output there will be data to Q channel of the offset QPSK RF modulator is there. So, this is the reverse channel. 
Now, first one is the orthogonal modulation. In case of this orthogonal modulation, 64 array orthogonal modulation using the same Walsh function in the forward link is there. Contrary to this forward link, it, uh, you, it is used for the forward uh, orthogonal data modulation. One Walsh function is transmitted for 6 coded bits. Uh, it is modulated a symbol rate is 28.8 kbps multiplied by 64 chips divided by 6 coded bits. So, this will uh, provide an output of 307.2 kcps then it increases the interference tolerance means the tolering nature of this uh, interference that how much uh, at how much point this interference will be tolerated this will be increased. So, uh, in an other way you can say that the interference is less in case of this orthogonal modulation. Next one is data burst randomizer. It turns off the transmitter when the data rate falls below 9.6 kbps. So, that each redundant bit it is sent only once. It is used to reduce the interference to uh, other users. Each 20 millisecond uh, frame is divided into 16 1.25 uh, millisecond of slots which are selected as a function of the long pn sequence so that is the case of data burst randomizer now this table is showing the comparison between is95 and the second generation cellular phone that is gsm so this is gsm this is also known as is54 or is136 and this is CDMA which is known as IS95 also. So, this is GSM is based on time division multiple access or frequency division multiple access. In this multiple access means more than one user is using a common channel. It can be divided that uh, the how they are the how the number of users are accessing a common channel it can be divided into time it can be divided into number of frequencies. And this IS95 is based on CDMA. This is based on hard handoff, this is based on soft handoff. Open loop and slow power control is there in case of this GSM, and in this case, closed loop and faster power control is there. It has fixed rate vocoder and it has variable rate vocoder. So, this uh, rate vocoder is there. Vocoder means voice coding technique. So, in this case it is fixed in nature and here it is variable in nature. Why variable? Because PN sequences are randomly generated in case of CDMA. So, every time the rate can be changed because it can be 10 bits, it can be 20 bits or it can be 32 bits. So, every time the coding uh, is variable in nature. Now, next is possible improvements of IS95. So, since we have discussed uh, in the previous lecture about uh, CDMA, how the code will be generated in today's lecture, we have discussed about um, reverse channel and forward channel of IS95, then what can be the or what will be the possible improvements that can be applied to this IS95. So, increasing the channel bandwidth beyond 1.25 megahertz, because since when we are discussing, since we are discussing this IS95 or CDMA, its channel bandwidth is fixed that is 1.25 megahertz. Directional antennas can be used on mobile stations. Now, why directional antennas? Let us say this base station is using a omnidirectional antenna, which will going to radiate the energy equally in every direction. Now, since uh, let us take an example like mobile phone, one is present over here, it will going to receive the signal from this path. Now, this particular area is a total waste, you can say there is a waste of energy because no mobile phone or no uh, person is using the energy which is radiated in this direction. So, that is the uh, you can say the loss of uh, power is there, but when we are using directional antennas, let us say mobile phone is present over here, then the major energy will be radiated only in the in direction and after that there will be side lobes which are present over here, which will produce a very less energy. So, this is the uh, main advantage of using this directional antennas which will radiate only in one direction maximum energy will be radiated in one direction. 
Next is better power control algorithms uh, can also be used. It can use uh, mobile ad hoc network that is another technology uh, magnet and adaptive filtering can also be there like filtering can be uh, adaptive in nature since uh, in IS 95 the number of bits in PN sequence that are uh, adaptive in uh, that are variable. So, adaptive filtering is also required. So, these are some of the possible improvement that can be applied to IS 95, so that its quality can be improved. These are the references that you can consider for this particular topic. Thank you.